999 vials stood in a huge swarm on the table. At last she joined them, the thousandth, completing the perfect picture. Rast said with relish, now today's batch is ready. Glancing at his watch, the guy decided that it was pretty good, since it was only half past mid-morning. And it had gone faster than he had expected. Distilled water is the most important ingredient in every porcelain processing, as well as in the preparation of living organisms. After all, its quality determines the quality of the workmanship. The distilled water that Rast makes is a special product of the highest quality, evenly mixed with magical power. Rast thought it would allow him to spend his time in the afternoon studying the materials. Master Leherzim greeted the young alchemist. Rast inquired as to what he could be of use. But the master puzzledly replied that he didn't know how to put it. Leherzim, the blacksmith alchemist, was about to start talking about people who do basic research, but abruptly cut himself short and said that none of that mattered. He said that Rast wanted to see the head of the association, which caused the young alchemist to give the young alchemist a puzzled look. Rast thought that there was some kind of trick here, since Liharzem had come to see him, who was usually connected to him in some way after all. After all, he is a member of the blacksmithing department and is in charge of making armor, the most lucrative business in all of manufacturing. Rast, on the other hand, had always been a stickler for keeping track of the budget of the basic research department in which he labored. Rast wondered why Lecharzam was in such a good mood. Having bought distilled water, the blacksmith had said before he left that the maids should sit and mind their own business. This made Rast even more perplexed. The true source of the fat blacksmith's joy became clear a little later, when Rast found himself in the office of the head of the association. The head announced that henceforth the Department of Fundamental Research was being cut from its budget. After reading the document, Rust realized that he had not imagined it at all, and now there really was no budget for his work. The head of the association explained that of course the basic research department always helps other departments, but the results are still disappointing. Therefore, his budget would be distributed among the most profitable departments. Rust decided not to give up and just started to make arguments in defense of his department, but the head immediately said that enough was enough. He firmly stated that the basic research department was now completely disbanded. And all Rast had to do was to join the other departments and continue working for the benefit of the association. The head of the association remarked that Rast should be grateful in general that he hadn't been fired yet. And as soon as he knew what useful things to do, he could get to work. Rast boiled over, but still decided that it would be ridiculous to even argue, since everything had already been decided. The young alchemist felt how unappreciated his labor was. After all, even the smoking pipes used by the head of the association himself would not have been created without the basic research department. But this had been overlooked. Rast remembered how much labor had been put into creating those pipes that the head enjoyed. Titanic labor had created an effective method of capturing magical elements from the atmosphere. It was the result of joint research between the basic research department and the formula development department and the development of the magic circuit to convert magic elements into heat to heat the inner tube, and all the necessary solutions and substrates were provided solely by the basic research department. Rast felt insulted after all, it was only the prejudices of the head of the association and other ignorant people, not versed in the field that gave the impression that the basic research section supposedly achieved nothing. Rast realized that this decision had been long planned, for even the reduction in the number of employees in the department since the current head of the association took office indicated this, though he still managed to work for the association and accomplish a lot. And he has something to be proud of because no development would have been successful without his basic research department. And all departments require the highest quality materials which he personally prepared. Rust thought that all these budget cuts and cuts in his department would not be good for the association at all but no one would tell the current chairman about it. He was distracted from his thoughts by a message sent by the information and communication equipment. This device was the height of perfection in modern ingenuity. Rast was also involved in the creation of this masterpiece as his department provided the necessary materials for the work. The message was from Karin with information about her school's graduation. The young alchemist and Karin were comrades and strangely enough were always on the same page. They learned a lot together, and also lived in a small room in the jungle. But then their paths diverged, Rust went about his research and work for the association, while Karin learned the military and was involved in it. Rast began to read the letter further. 
Karen apologized for being too intrusive and reminded him of their former friendship. She said, without too much explanation, that she had been given a fiefdom on the border and was asking Rast to help her develop her territory. Rast pondered the difficult choice, for he had two paths before him. First, he saw a future in which he would spend the rest of his life doing only housework. The other option promised a future in which anything could happen. The young alchemist remembered Karin's sweet face and thought that maybe he really should quit his job. And then they could have fun with Karin again. Rast decided that if the former president of the association was in charge, it would be a great job because with him, there was understanding and caring. In particular, the former head of the association, Halhammer, was someone who had gone through all levels of training himself and understood the importance of basic research. And many of the developed recipes in the department were created with his input. Halhammer appreciated the work of the basic research department and expressed its merit many times in general meetings. But after the political turmoil, Master Halhammer was transferred to another position. And in his place came the head of Cooperative M, a man who had been an official all his life. Rast went to the door of the office of the head of the association and heard the conversation between the head and the blacksmith alchemist Liharzam. The topic of their discussion was the reallocation of budget funds, as well as increasing the funding for the forge's work at the expense of closing the basic research department. From the conversation, it was clear that the priority was given to development over samples in the arsenal, and it became clear that the closure of the research department was done for that purpose only. Rast thought resentfully that they could have been quieter in expressing their joy. The young alchemist entered the office and immediately received a portion of negativity. The head of the association exclaimed that he should not come here so easily. Rast's visit caused the head of the association a fit of rage, which he did not even try to hide, shouting loudly and shaking the table with his hand. Rast gathered his thoughts and made a decision and said that he was quitting. Such a statement puzzled the head of the association and the blacksmith Liharzam. The head exclaimed that Rast could not just take leave like that, and Likarzam asked why he had decided to leave on his own. But Rast only replied to the two schemers that he could quit and leave whenever he wished to do so himself, and gave them his application. The young alchemist explained that the labor contract only applied to the basic research department. And he had only come to this job with the assurance that he would be doing research in the basic research section. But thanks to someone, it just so happened that the basic research section had been disbanded. And that meant that he could leave his job in that organization on the same day. The blacksmith alchemist Liharzam asked, what about the household chores now and who would even make distilled water for him? But Rast savored the moment and reminded him that making water was not part of his contract. And he advised Likarzam to master this production himself because he was a recognized master of his craft and it would be easy for him. The head of the association said that Rast's journey was going well. After all, Master Lihazamer had said he could do without him. The head asked the blacksmith alchemist if there would be any problems with this. Lihazamer, realizing how his own intrigues had turned against himself, replied that he would definitely manage. The association leader said to the young alchemist that they didn't need people who couldn't even understand how warm the association was to the idea of hiring them, even as a laborer. And at the end, he simply barked for Rast to get out of his sight. Rust replied that he didn't need such kindness and wished him well. And then there was the loud slamming of the door that ended Rust's career with the organization. Walking down the hallway, the young alchemist looked at the majestic painting on the wall and thought that this was most likely the last time he would see it with his own eyes. Rast said quietly that he was grateful for the support and continued on his way to his new life. Once far outside the city, Rust thought about what had happened and was surprised to realize that he wasn't upset at all and was in a good mood. He had also just canceled the lease on his apartment and all his belongings were in his backpack with him. Rust decided that now he will continue his journey to Karin and the main thing is to believe in the best. With a slight movement of his hand, Rust unrolled the scroll of summoning and called the hippopotamus Comister Wolf to his aid. Climbing on the back of the mighty animal, Rast, looking forward to the future, ordered to rush to the border. The settled territory of Kali Lung was on the northern edge of the country. Rast contacted these lands to inform Karin of his intention to come and help settle her domain. Karin replied that she would welcome him with open arms. Rast was embarrassed by Karin's enthusiasm and decided that she was overreacting, for he felt that he would be of little use to her. As he rode through the familiar places, Rast remembered that he hadn't been here for a long time since the last outing. 
He used to come to this area to gather materials. A light breeze let him smell the floral scent of new growth. And deciding that he had recently been under some serious stress, Rast, now that he had some free time, wanted to do some collecting. The young alchemist thought of the nearest lake, where he hoped there might still be some settlements. But suddenly the beautiful thoughts were disturbed by the disturbance of a hippopotamus. Rast realized that the animal was warning him about something and advising him to be careful. The wooden clappers discovered on the signal system probably belonged to his majesty. And just behind them, Rust saw some body lying right on the ground. Ordering the hippogriff to be on guard, the young alchemist, without a second thought, rushed to help the unknown person. But still, he reminded himself immediately that if you are on the road, you can fall into a trap where people pretend to be victims or just lost. While the chances of that happening in such a remote place are slim to none, you still shouldn't relax. Upon examining the body, Rast realized that it was wearing the gear of rare priest knights. And upon closer inspection, Rast decided that it was the uniform of a priest of the Goddess of Vengeance community. The heat from the body indicated a high temperature of the victim, and it was obvious that this girl was unconscious. Rast remembered that there were fever-reducing herbs nearby along the road, though it was unlikely that this priest would know such intricacies of the local vegetation. Rast decided he needed to clear his victim's airways and check her condition. Apologizing in advance for his manipulations, Rast turned the body over and was horrified, for the girl was under compression and perhaps plus she had been struck by a curse. Deciding not to take too long to help the victim, Rust took out a scroll of creation and began the process. Using magical diagnostics, Rast analyzed the girl's condition. Rast recognized now for sure that she had a very high fever and her health level was at an extremely low level. It became obvious that the girl was not easy for the priest. The young alchemist thought that somehow his carefree journey had been quickly replaced by heavy worries. After continuing to examine the injured girl, Rast was still able to discover the cause of such a high fever. The girl had severe wounds on her side and back, and now everything was clear. And it was also revealed that a type of poison had been used against her. And such a poison could only come from a familiar. Rast realized that his potions were not suitable for healing such a serious problem. After examining the local vegetation, the young alchemist decided in such a case to urgently make a new healing potion. Rast ordered his faithful hippopotamus to guard the wounded girl and went in search of the necessary ingredients. Trying to hurry, he ran, but fatigue soon made itself felt. Rast, trying to catch his breath, thought that he shouldn't have skipped his daily exercise and it would be easier now. And now it was worth thinking about and taking up training, or it wasn't a good thing to get tired so quickly. Rast decided not to waste time and use the recovery potion to start breathing normally as soon as possible. Upon reaching the forest lake, Rast said that this was what he was looking for. Examining the vegetation, Rust was slightly disappointed, for it was obvious that the grass was getting smaller. And it was obvious that someone was here regularly collecting medicinal plants. This place was a rich source of medicinal herbs. White bellflower helps to increase body regeneration, yellow creeper helps to regenerate injured body parts, and pale larch is great at removing toxins from the body. Although the ordinary plant has little effect on the body, but when a potion is created from it, the effectiveness changes significantly. Rast was glad that he found this girl now, because if it had happened later, it would have been difficult to save her from the effects of such a strong poison. As it was, he was sure she would be fine once he made the new potion. Rast even remembered his brother, who once found himself in a similar situation. Busy making the potion, Rast realized that speed of melting should be a priority and began to work his magic. Having finished the initial stage of preparation, Rast moved on to releasing the gravitational yoke and began to gradually combine the necessary components of the future potion. The last thing Rast did was to purify the product, a process that required the utmost attention because otherwise everything could be spoiled. Every time Rust created potions, he always had Aramanaki because he didn't want to mess with them and had to prepare them in advance. Rast thought he had a huge problem in that he was creating everything he could. And this special water is like a concept, and it becomes what it eventually needs to become. Generally speaking, of course, there are a few tricks to creating the perfect concept. Like reading a thousand books in a day, or creating a thousand bottles of potions in a day. Rast embarked on a new preparation to create the purest potion. After all, the purest liquid has the greatest ability to restore the body. 
And when this perfectly pure water is combined with medicinal herbs, a perfect balance of components is obtained. To do this, the water must turn purple in color. In the end, the thorough purification process was completed as it should be. Rast finished creating the perfect potion for the sake of that wounded stranger on the road. Rast, as usual at the end, removed the restriction of the power yoke and filled the vial with the resulting liquid. The young alchemist praised himself for the excellent result and said that now he should hurry back. Returning to the place where the wounded girl was lying, Raz heard the loud stomping of the hippo's hooves. The animal was obviously worried about something and Rast wondered what he was doing. The hippopotamus was rearing up on its haunches and hitting the ground with force, as if trying to say something. His efforts alarmed even the forest creatures, who hurriedly flew away from the frightening sound. Rast decided to find out the reason for the hippo's behavior and sped off in the right direction. Rast asked if the hippo was alright and what had happened at all. But upon reaching the spot Rast saw the hippo desperately stomping the familiar. The young alchemist ordered the hippopotamus to hold the familiar. And he realized that quite possibly the familiar had been following his victim since he was here and now. Apologizing to the faithful hippogriff, Raz decided that first of all it was necessary to help the wounded girl and began to use the potion he had received. As soon as the first drops of the potion were on the stranger's body, she began to react, gradually coming to her senses. Her consciousness opened like a flower bud, and soon she opened her eyes and mumbled what had happened. Then the healing process accelerated and the girl, feeling her strength back, jumped to her feet, snatching up her sword, apparently thinking that she was facing an enemy. Rast, not expecting such a turn of events, hastened to shield himself from the wrath of the revitalized girl knight. He said that if she meant the one who was following her, he was behind her and pointed in the right direction. The girl, seeing no threat from the pleasant-looking young man, asked who he was and why he was near her. Rast, out of habit, almost said that he was from the association, but thought it was no longer relevant. In the end, he said that he was a traveling alchemist and had no money at all. A little embarrassed by his own words, Rust thought that he had gotten it all wrong out of excitement and had actually meant that he was just unemployed. The girl exclaimed what kind of alchemist he was. Rast asked her to calm down and apologized for treating her wounds without her permission. But he also explained that the poison in her body had not yet been completely purified and needed to be completed. Rast held out a vial of the potion to the girl, surprising the stranger. The girl, having recovered from her initial emotions and assessed the situation, thanked Rast for his help. Then she asked what she owed for her healing. Rast thought that the girl must have misunderstood him. And she probably thinks he didn't fully heal her, just because of someone who wants money for a full cure. Russ said that he didn't have any evil intentions, so she didn't need to worry or think anything bad. Rast explained that he just thought it would be best if she was conscious enough to drink the remaining potions on her own. The girl, giving a gorgeous smile, asked her to understand and apologized, as she always kept her guard up. She said that she was now sure of her savior's good intentions. And since his potions are so good in their effectiveness, they just can't be free. Rast thought about her words and replied that in that case he was willing to make a deal. Rast revealed that he was a traveling alchemist and in the service of Karin, the lord of the northern border. The young alchemist asked the girl knight to lend him the power of her sword in the future if he ever had such a need. Then Rast, like a pure-blooded aristocrat, made a graceful gesture and asked her what her name was, and then handing over a vial of healing potion reminded her that she owed him a favor. The girl, having exposed her blade, declared that she was the goddess of vengeance Tora, one of the three knight's swords. She advised the young alchemist to memorize her name well, for she was the one who cut through evil with her sword. Rast thought, it seems that this brutal lady loves herself very much, and offered to take the vial with the potion after all. Tora immediately began to drink the magic liquid with greedy gulps and feeling the effect of the potion, said that it became somehow warm. Coughing a little and taking out her sword to use it as a mirror, she was surprised to say that the curse was completely gone. The young alchemist mentally praised herself for her skill. And Tora asked how this was possible, since no amount of holy water could remove this curse. Rast explained that it was all due to the additional effect of the potion, it was the potion that got rid of the curse. The potion is absolutely pure water, in other words, it's kind of like a divine potion. Therefore, it is more effective than plain holy water, and the removal of the curse is just a nice bonus from the potion. Rast said that if Tora didn't mind, he had something for her, just need to wait a little for one minute. 
The girl knight tried to stop the young alchemist's noble impulse, but Rast had already dipped into his backpack, trying to find the right thing. After a couple of minutes, he solemnly exclaimed that he had found it and handed Tora a vial with a golden potion. The girl asked if it was the legendary elixir. Tora promised that she would be very much indebted to Rast for such a generous gift. The girl knight, looking at the golden liquid in the sunlight, thought that this young man was not as simple as he looked at first sight. She asked if she understood correctly that he was traveling to the northern border and offered to go with him as soon as she got her revenge. Rast looked at the young goddess of vengeance and thought that in all moments love is the reason this world exists. And how many humans will know the truth of this world? As dusk changed to evening, Rast suggested that they take a rest break. The young alchemist noticed how the stars were shining brighter than usual this evening. After parting ways with Tora, Rast decided to head straight north. He felt how much contemplating the starry sky while warming himself by the makeshift fire helped him get his thoughts in order. Rast admitted to himself that it had been a long time since he had had such a beautiful night. After all, in the association, all he had done was explore night after night until dawn, oblivious to the simple things. After studying the map, Rast realized that there must be another village before the northern border and they should reach it soon enough. But the hippopotamus was not very interested in the information about their route, but only tried to take his food from Rast. Rast paid attention to the food and realized that all his journey would be accompanied by such a modest food. This bar of various dried grains and fruits. It is his personal invention, accidentally made during his old explorations. Rast remembered with a smile how Karin had called his bar an herbal brick because of its peculiar flavor. Though it didn't actually taste that bad, especially to a peckish person. Rust decided it would be a good idea to arrive at that village by the next evening. After another impressive stretch of travel, Rast looked at the map again and wondered why the hippopotamus had stopped. The young alchemist looked around the area and decided that the village was close by. But expectations were not met, and the village appeared to be abandoned. Rast said that it was the village Karin had been talking about, but he was not sure if it was. But since they had gotten here, it was worth a look around, and he thanked the hippogriff for his help. Rast used the reamer and returned the hippogriff back to the scroll, telling him, see you later. The stranger asked Rast who he was. Rast smilingly greeted the strange guy and introduced himself, explaining that he was a traveling alchemist. The friendly alchemist decided to continue his story, but the stranger looked at Rast and asked him if he was really an alchemist. He then suggested that they go to the village to meet the village headman. As he walked down the street, Rast noticed that the village was really desolate and didn't look very prosperous. Many of the houses were abandoned and apparently there were many more of them than there were inhabited. Still, the boy led Rast to one nice looking house. Rust noticed the twigs hanging at the entrance, which apparently marked the house of the headman. And judging by the freshness of the plants, they had been plucked not so long ago, which indicated at least some activity in the settlement. The boy knocked on the door and announced that he was the alchemist's hello. Shuffling footsteps were heard and the door opened with a distinctive creak. A gray-haired old man inquired if it was the real alchemist. The village guide honestly admitted that he hadn't checked yet, but it did look like an alchemist. Rast greeted the old man and introduced himself, saying that he was indeed a traveling alchemist. Realizing the distrust of the locals, Rast decided to prove his status. Showing his medallion, Rast explained that it was the alchemist's medallion and his proof of the truth of his words. Not willing to take his word for it, the old man scrutinized the shiny piece of metal with his monocle and then apologized for his tactlessness. The old man explained that he represented this village as headman, and then agreed that only true alchemists could really have such medallions. But showing a deeper knowledge, he added that Rast's medallion was of the highest rank as far as he could remember. Rast of course knew that medallions were the dignity of an alchemist to confirm his identity and rank, but he himself had never paid much attention to it before. It was only now that he remembered that his medallion was actually of the first rank. Even though the alchemists in the association were divided by rank, at least half of them were of the highest rank, so no one had paid much attention to these differences. After all, his former association was one of the best in the country, so some glory remained. Rust told the old man that everything was correct and that he was indeed a top-ranked alchemist. The headman apologized for his subordinate's ignorance and invited Rust to come inside for tea. Immediately, without prelude, he admitted that he would have a favor to ask of Rast. 
Rast guessed that the reason for the request was most likely to do with the confusing houses in the village. In addition, the fact that they were showing proper address to higher-ranked alchemists showed that they were educated people. Rast thanked for the invitation and proceeded into the house, wondering if their conversation would go smoothly. The landlady apologized for the rather ordinary tea, but Rast replied that he was happy to have that as well, so no need to worry. Rast thought that after eating only bars and tea made of ordinary leaves, such homemade, warm tea seemed incredibly delicious. The headman wanted to get straight to the point and asked if Rust had any old-style magic stones with him. Such a question surprised Rast, and he said that his answer would depend on the needs of the elder's request. What the people of this humble village needed such stones for in the first place. The elder asked if Rast knew about the reform of all magical weapons signed into law last year, which mandated that the weapons be changed. Rast replied that he recalled such an event. He remembered that last year Liharzam from the blacksmithing department had spent a week bragging about something similar to this weapon of mine and laughing at the same time. He also boasted that this weapon would raise his prestige. Zar, the assistant headman, said that this reform did not bring anything good and only looks good in words, but in fact powerful weapons have become useless trinkets, that's all. The headman reminded the lad of his manners and asked Zar to bring samples. The old man said that in truth, his assistant's words were quite accurate in assessing the result. Rast asked for a more detailed account of the whole situation. The young alchemist was shown two versions of magic weapons, one of the old model and the other of the new model. The headman explained that magical weapons, in and of themselves, were indispensable tools for people who did not have a deep knowledge of weapons. In order to lead a more or less peaceful life on the frontier, it was used to drive away rampaging beasts and monsters. And so it was for a very long time before the reform came. But then things changed dramatically, and not for the better. The old model is a good and extremely economical thing to maintain. And as for the fuel, the magic stone, you have to change it quite rarely. Such a factor makes this weapon an ideal friend for people on the frontier. And the new H32 model created a few years ago turned out to be particularly good. It was called Immortal, and became a favorite for many people who did not hesitate to trust it with their lives. Rast was interested in the interesting model of the gun, and remembered that when he first came to the association, this model was just being developed and Master Halhammer was in charge of the forging department at that time, and he was the one who was in charge of the development. Then even came up with a slogan for this weapon, with this weapon, the soldier will die only from old age. And although this economical and really powerful model experts at the time called it unremarkable junk, from the point of view of ordinary users, it was excellent. Rast stated that he expected nothing less from Master Halhammer. Tsar added that compared to this weapon of the gods, the newest model was just trash or worse. The headman, again reminding his assistant of his manners, still agreed with his accurate assessment of the weapon. The headman explained that the power of the new model had increased a bit, but the quality was worse than ever. The weapon simply fell apart after a dozen shots. But what was even worse was the need for fuel. The newer model could only be fueled by the same newer magic stones, which cost a lot, but they didn't last very long. Tsar added that the old model was perfect in its power, which the headman agreed with. But unfortunately, the production of obsolete models has ceased, as well as magic stones to them. And although the magic weapons of the old models still work perfectly well, but without the magic stones, which are no longer available anywhere, the weapons are useless. Tsar said that's why they had to buy new models, but it turned out that they were of no use and only cost. It costs a lot of money to keep them constantly fueled, which doesn't provide enough protection. And because of this, people had to save money and let the monsters run wild. But even if people did not save money, there were times when the weapons simply exploded or broke due to poor workmanship. As a result, the damage from beasts and monsters increased many times over. People became afraid, and the breadwinners of families couldn't hunt. Rust asked, and the residents ended up being forced to move to calmer lands, was that how he understood everything? The headman only nodded in agreement. Rast said that now after all this story he understood the interest in magic stones, but unfortunately he didn't have any. The faces of the headman and the assistant began to express true disappointment and doom. So Rast decided to reward these people for their suffering and said that he would make these stones himself. From surprise and joy, Zar's mouth showed its maximum opening, and the old man's monocle rolled threateningly, threatening to fall out and his eyes. 
They both exclaimed that this was just wonderful, and they were happy to hear such a thing. Rust explained that they needed to understand his favor would not be free. The headman replied that it wouldn't cause a problem. And Rast immediately voiced that he would need access to the resources of their forest, within reason of course. The headman was surprised at such an unusual fee. And Zar explained that there were many cagely trees growing in their forest and asked why Rast needed them. The alchemist thought that he had not expected understanding from people far from knowledge of alchemy. And apparently decorating the entrance to the house with tree branches was just a local tradition. And they planted trees less often because of the problems with monsters. Rust replied that if there were a lot of trees, that was fine. He asked to be escorted to the trees because it was the blooming season and he wanted to look at them. Rast remembered reading in an old book about a local custom that required at least one cagely tree to grow in the village. The headman replied that he would be happy to escort Rast and offered to go to the actual grove of cagely trees. To Rast's surprise, all the villagers gradually joined in their trek and were clearly interested in the strange visitor. He thought that this small village must have a problem with entertainment since such a crowd of gawkers had gathered. Though there were, oddly enough, almost no children among the people. Once in the Cajal Grove, Rust felt the splendor of the trees. Rast asked the headman to help him gather some of the materials that had fallen from the trees. The headman, immediately remembering his status, organized all the villagers to collect the fruits and branches of the Cajal and ordered them to bring everything they collected to him. The work boiled over and soon Rast was given a pile of fruits and branches of this unique tree. Rast thanked them for their help and decided that he had enough. Rast decided to start practicing alchemy and people began to watch him with interest. First of all, Rust needed a magic monster stone to create the stones he needed, but that wasn't the end of the story and he began the process. People began to animatedly discuss the young alchemist who was working wonders before their eyes. They told each other that alchemists of this level had secret arts and could create anything from literally nothing. Hearing their voices, Rast thought that there were quite a few of them gathered, and yet they understood absolutely nothing about alchemy. And now he was putting on a free show in which he was performing miracles that only he could understand. Having completed the process of creation, Rast began to purify himself to the admiration of all. He thought that maybe he should now show off his special method of creation to create a stone himself from magical particles in the air. In general, such stones that are usually obtained from monsters do not appear out of nowhere. They crystallize in the bodies of monsters over a very long period of time from magic particles in the atmosphere. And so stones can be created by filtering the air, extracting magical particles from it, and then crystallizing them. By creating stones using this principle, one could avoid the cost of trying to hunt monsters. Rast noticed just the right particles, also of high density. Rust thought how surprised all these people were since they had no idea what was going on. But now at least they would see his special purification technique. After all, only he and the entire universe can create stones in this way. And that will make this moment even more unforgettable for people. Rast took the fruit of the Cajal and intended to use it as a vessel for crystallizing magical particles. After all, such a fruit is widely used in a wide variety of recipes as one of the ingredients. Continuing to make spectacular movements with his hands, delighting the audience more and more, Rast began the polishing process. Immediately, the enthusiastic voices of the villagers could be heard, who were apparently happy. Their delight was a wind funnel, which they had never seen before. Rust wondered if the people were so delighted with his work, for he himself had not even expected such a reaction. Rast decided to warm up the audience even more and announced that he would now begin placing magic particles into the cajal fruit to give the magic particles shape. He thought, in order to complete the final touch to creating a high quality stone, one must still apply polishing. After all, the polishing ability doesn't just create a mini tornado, but the entire effectiveness lies in the diamond dust within it. By varying the density of the diamond dust in the tornado and the speed at which they rotate, it is possible to cut down to the smallest detail. Rust decided it was time to start increasing the density of the diamond dust. The mini whirlwind sparkled with diamond dust particles and people cheered, although they didn't realize what was happening. Rast grinned at the sight of the mesmerized women, for wherever he did it, all women reacted the same way to glitter. Rast remembered that when evaluating magical stones, there are three parameters by which their quality is judged. Size, strength, and durability. In particular, the size and strength of the stone play a big role. 
If they do not harmonize with each other, the magic stone will not work, and the power of the stone is determined by the quality of the cut. Rast praised himself for his good memory, which allowed him to recall the parameters of the old type of stone and started shaping it. Having corrected some inaccuracies on the way to the goal, the alchemist exhaled and said that it seems to be ready. All that remained was to finish the final touches in sealing the magical particles in the cajal fruit. The magic stone, created in such a rare and unusual way, sparkled with its novelty in Rast's hand. The young alchemist, pleased with himself, admitted that it was even better than he had expected. Rast asked if the headman would do him the honor of trying out the weapon. The headman replied that he would be happy to do so. Visibly worried, he loaded the weapon with the new magical stone, and to everyone's joy it fired upwards. People shouted and applauded with joy. And someone even exclaimed that now one could live and not be afraid. Rast thought that when you see such joyful faces, you realize that all your deeds were not in vain. Rast after resting a bit decided that he needed to make some more stones for these residents and began the creation process again. He then created a simultaneous progression of three sets. The whole circle was saturated with magical particles that swirled around and glittered in sunny color. The people still did not disperse and continued to watch the amazing alchemist at work. After a while, Rast exhaled tiredly and said that now it should be enough. The villagers were amazed at the amount of stones, of which there were a whole bunch. Rast even gave a small alchemy lesson to the residents, who listened with interest to something new in their lives. The alchemist realized that, of course, this would hardly allow them to create stones, for even he needed not so little time to do so. Rast handed all the stones to the inhabitants and explained that each of them was filled to the brim with magical particles. At the same time, his stones were twice as spacious as the old type of stones he had supplied in the past. The headman was taken aback by this amount. He recognized that all five of these baskets would be impossible for their village alone to fully utilize in a lifetime. And now he would have to consult with the Lord. Trembling with excitement, the headman admitted that this was the first time in his long life that he had been surprised this much. And he didn't even expect to get such a result from his request. The headman decided to take all the stones back to the village as soon as possible and entrusted Zomer to take care of it. Rast recognized that there were indeed a lot of stones and appreciated the organization of the villagers who had taken up the task of transporting them to the village. Rast decided it was time to move to a setting to discuss their future conversation. The headman promised to send free men to help Rast gather materials. But Rast replied that there was no need to do that and since he had started the work, he would complete it himself. Activating the polish and release, Rust mentally thanked the villagers for their initiative since they had even volunteered to help him with the materials. Deciding that he no longer needed the diamond dust, Rust began to lower its density to zero. He also simultaneously whirled all the branches and fruits of the cajol into a tornado. The villagers became animated by this performance and began to praise Rast for his skill, for he was able to clear everything very quickly without counting all the work. Meanwhile, Rast was putting the finishing touches on everything and putting everything into bags. When he had finished cleaning up, Rust asked the headman to move with him to a more comfortable place to talk. The headman agreed and ordered his assistant to finish all the work and return home. Zar promised to do it right and reminded him that he could be relied on. Rast marveled at the coherence of people who understood each other half-heartedly and decided that with such a relationship they would do well. Feeling the pleasant aroma of the local tea and the warmth of the mug in his hand, Rust realized that tea after work tasted especially wonderful. And the feeling of accomplishment from work after seeing other people genuinely enjoying it is noticeably different. Rast told you that now it was okay to talk. The headman tensed slightly and replied that he was willing to listen carefully. Rust smiled and thought that he looked so scary in the eyes of the old man since the headman was so wary. He was probably expecting to hear something very bad. Rust asked the old man to relax, as their next conversation would not be about what he was thinking. Rast explained that the conversation would be about old type stones. Rast asked if he was correct in his understanding that now, with only one village using the stones, those supplies would likely last for many years. The headman replied, given such a large number of stones and their increased capacity, he could confidently confirm that there would be enough magical stones for the next few decades. The headman admitted that he was at a loss and had no idea how to thank Rust. The young alchemist suggested that the village was probably not alone in needing such stones at such a difficult time, especially in the borderlands. 
The elder confirmed that this was indeed the case, and everyone living in these difficult areas was eagerly awaiting the return of the old type of magic stones. Almost reaching the truth, Rust stated that this was exactly what their conversation would be about. The young alchemist explained that he wanted to discuss the possibility of contracting for the old type stones, but the new holdings of Night Karen. The headman became animated and replied that he had heard from his lord about this girl knight, who could defeat three heavy infantrymen with her sword. He had also heard how recent wars had ended in glorious victory thanks to her. Despite her thin, feminine hands, Karen is so strong that it's hard to call her human, and she was given the nickname because of it. Rast remembered the many times he had heard the praise of her hands. Such praise was not pleasant to hear when a girl was described as a monster capable of chopping up a dragon. Rast informed the headman that Karin had been his friend in his student days, and he was just on his way to see her. The headman apologized for his harsh words towards her. Rast explained that that was why he wanted the headman himself to personally talk to the local lord about the issue of cooperation. Rast was certain that developing Karin's new lands would cost a tidy sum. That was why a way to make money between the villagers and Karin's territory would be useful. But that's only if Karin herself doesn't refuse to entrust Rust with the management of this work. And if she trusts his project and entrusts him with all the worries associated with it, it is certain that the local lords will make a favorable deal, even with a small amount of work. Rust said that the most important thing was to lay the groundwork to start the cooperation. And such a foundation was already in place, for he had already provided this village with the magic stones they needed. This was a gift with a view to future cooperation, which the headman was happy about. The headman thanked them for their great help, and agreed that Rast's offer would be extremely beneficial to them. Rast said who would like to send the letter, and the headman immediately ordered to give Master Rast paper and pen. Rust thought there was something else, and he now needed a root canal. And for that, the letter would be addressed to another one of his school friends besides Karin. He's just now in the military, and this case involves a conflict of interest regarding magical gems. And there are suspicions that Liharzam might be involved, though of course he doesn't care about him at all. After all, more interested in the military. Rast realized that they had switched to a new type of weapon during the war. And of course, military equipment also makes a huge profit for the army. And then comes that time of confrontation. After all, once the flow of Rast's old magic stones starts, the army will definitely want to crush him with its production. Finishing his letter, Rast thanked the paper and decided that everything once again needed to be well thought out. The headman offered to handle the mailing of the letter, and Rust began sealing the letter with his medallion. The seal was unique and would serve as proof of the sender's identity. Rust said that it was now time for him to continue on his way, and the headman immediately offered to stay another night. But the alchemist refused, explaining that he had already spent a lot of time working in the village, so he could not linger any longer. The villagers, when they heard the young alchemist leaving their village, rushed to him. Everyone wanted to ask for something different, someone asked for help with household chores, someone decided that Rast would improve his old axe, and there were a lot of such requests. But Rust promised that he would definitely visit the village again and set off. Soon enough he was at his goal, ahead of him was the border. Rast was surprised at the sight here, and realized that the rumors about these lands were completely inaccurate. It turned out that there were no living plants or animals here, and there were exclusively monsters. However, there were creatures and plants in the wasteland that he had never known about before. It remained to be seen if they were dangerous. The hippopotamus became alarmed, warning of danger at the same moment some tentacle pounced on them, but the animal reacted in time and destroyed the incomprehensible creature. Rust thanked the animal for such sensitivity to danger, because it always helps in critical situations. Rust decided to take a sample of the unknown organism for research, and using his collecting gloves, he placed the sample in a waterproof bag, saying at the same time that it might come in handy. Taking a breath, Rast decided that this place had become a wasteland due to the monsters who were displacing all other creatures and dominating the place. And since there were so many monsters here that he had never seen before, he would be very interested in studying them. Looking at the map, Rast realized that they would soon reach the watering hole, and as soon as they passed it, they would be almost near Karen. There wasn't much time left until the meeting. Rast was surprised to see the watering hole, for it was not as large as he had imagined. The young alchemist suggested they take a break and rest for a while. He immediately wondered if there were any monsters in the watering hole. Feeling someone's presence, Roz realized that he had to be careful. 
and then to his surprise, he felt the appearance of magical vibrations in the water. Something abruptly came out of the water, enveloping the guy in a massive spray, and he saw a baby lizard. Rast realized that it was a rather rare species and immediately saw the tentacles rapidly approaching. In time, the young alchemist realized that it wasn't him at all that was attacked, but the lizard cub. The tentacles grabbed the lizard cub and Rast saw the animal's doomed look. He thought that it didn't matter how much this baby looked like a defenseless child. It's still a monster, and its appearance doesn't guarantee that it's really a harmless baby. Sometimes such techniques are just a way to put the enemy's vigilance to sleep. But in general, when it comes to fighting monsters, the strong always devours the weak, and this is the law of nature. Still, Rast could not bear the sight of the dying baby lizard and decided that he felt too sorry for him. Rust ordered the hippopotamus to help, and the mighty animal with all its might delivered the baby from the embrace of the ugly tentacle. Rast thanked the hippo for its ability to solve the problem with power and began to put on his protective gauntlet. The young alchemist examined the baby and was surprised at the lack of reaction, as it didn't look like he was dead. Rast wondered if he should use part of the tentacle as a consumable. But still deciding to do so, he applied deployment, decryption, and manifestation. Not getting the desired result, the young alchemist realized that this is probably because of the difference from humans. And that is why it is not possible to read the information properly. But immediately realized that the problem was something else entirely, the view was simply blocked. After changing the settings a little, Rust realized that the animal was in a stage of complete exhaustion. The activity of its mitochondria had dropped to an extreme maximum, though it was still difficult to judge the monster's full condition. Seeing the hippopotamus headed for the pond, Rust asked him to be careful for who knew what else was out there. Rast decided that it would be nearly impossible to quickly prepare an excellent potion with the current state of this lizard, since there was no way to know for sure what the monster's condition was when it was normal. And in such cases, it was better to limit oneself to safe potions. To the young alchemist's surprise, the hippo pulled something strange out of the water. Rast asked if it was the same monster that had attacked the baby. The hippopotamus showed with his whole appearance that it was. Rast applied the potion, but was disappointed because the baby never woke up. Although the analysis showed that the level of mitochondrial activity clearly increased in the monster, and it's almost at the normal human level, it turns out that its limit value is many times greater and the difference between humans is significant. Rast noticed that it is unusual for a hippo to be so friendly to some monster because the hippo is very sensitive to any hostility and anger and we can assume that the lizard is not a dangerous or evil monster at all. Rust thought that if we just leave it as it is, then it is unlikely that the lizard will have a chance for salvation. After all, this watering hole is in the middle of the wasteland, and there are quite a few monsters seen around here. In addition, the disappearance of the monster with tentacles can attract new inhabitants of these places. So leaving the little one here unattended would definitely kill him. Rast asked the hippopotamus if they should take the baby lizard with them, to which the mighty beast nodded his head approvingly. After studying the map, Rust said they should follow the river that flowed from this watering hole. After a short distance on the planned route, Rust saw a settlement ahead. He said it looked like this was Karin's camp. Rast asked the hippogriff to stop and got down on the ground. The young alchemist showed off his medallion and said his name is Rast. He is also a master rank alchemist and belongs to the School of Fundamental Truth. Ras said that he had come here at the request of Knight Karin, so he was asking to be welcomed into the camp. A girl with a scarf hiding her face came out to meet Rast. The girl stated that they were happy to host Master Rast. She explained that there were monsters on the border that could imitate humans and apologized for such a suspicious welcome. Looking at the armament of the warriors, Rast realized that this was exactly what the hippopotamus had warned him about, for if they came even a little closer, you would enter their attack zone. Rast said that of course you understood and praised the warriors for their skillful disguise. Rast asked if those cloth blindfolds over their eyes were created with magic. The girl answered that they were perfectly trained to act stealthily, but despite such skill, Rast still somehow managed to detect them. And now they could see why Mistress Karin was so complimentary of Master Rasta. The girl explained that their bandages were just a piece of cloth without any magic. Rast noticed that the patterns of blue and red eyes were applied to the bandages. And judging by their appearance, they looked very similar to magical items, so the meaning of their application was not quite clear. The girl asked if there really was some kind of monster on the back of the riding hippo. 
Immediately the girls got into an argument from which it became clear that they were sisters. One of them was called Ari, and she was trying to quiet Roa, who had asked about the monster. Ari asked her sister if she meant to say that they couldn't let Master Rasta in because of that little monster. And was Roa really going to fight him? The argument subsided and Ari apologized for her sister's behavior. Rast thought it was a good thing that the situation had not turned into a useless battle. After all, he wouldn't want to get into trouble at the very beginning of his work. And in general, it seemed that these girls had some kind of special gift of guidance, since they were able to identify the monster that was hidden on the behemoth so quickly. And the younger sister was most likely watching their approach from afar, and it's unclear if she can read other people's abilities. Rast realized that no matter how it was, this white lizard was still a cause for concern. The young alchemist said that he understood the valid concerns perfectly. Well as for this white lizard, he is willing to take responsibility for it as well as his medallion. Ari thanked the young alchemist for his generous and sincere words and offered to follow them. She promised that they would escort Master Rasta to Mistress Karen. After walking a short distance, they found themselves at a large tent and Ari said that Rast was now in place. Entering the tent, the young alchemist was surprised at how busy the people were with preparing and sending messages. Rast seeing the advanced communication equipment decided that this place, this was some sort of centralized information headquarters in the camp. Suddenly Karin appeared and exclaimed that Rast had finally gotten to her. Rast saw a familiar girl that was dear to him and old feelings came flooding back. Karin shook hands with the alchemist and admitted that they had been waiting for him for a long time. Rast immediately asked to loosen his grip as he felt an unbearable pain in his hand. Karen began to say how long it had been since they had seen each other, though Rast had not aged a bit. The young alchemist replied that it was irrelevant and called her school friend mistress. Karen only hummed and said that Rast was still the same as he was. Karen said that despite the considerable remoteness of this area Rust had managed to get here quite easily. She asked how he had managed to avoid trouble with the two sisters who she realized had come out to meet him. After hearing about the sisters meeting him, Rast realized that Karin had purposely sent the sisters out to meet him so that they would be able to sort things out in case there were any problems with him. Though it was understandable that Karin had enough reason to think about such matters, since she had been involved in all of this for quite some time. So the sisters took the risk of further conflict among themselves when they agreed to go along with it. Rust thought that in that case, he did not have to go along with Karin and tell him what was going on, at least not right now. Rust replied that there were no problems with the sisters and the meeting was calm. Karin said that was good and offered to end the idle chatter as she had something to show. She asked the workers to take a short break and leave her alone with Rust. Karin looked around the room and said it was a pity there was no table. But she immediately found a solution and forcefully pulled a huge wooden box. Rast thought that she hadn't changed at all and was still as strong and rough. Karin solemnly said that this was now a great place and shouted to her sisters Ari and Roa to bring tea. Rast asked if Karin had a problem since she was so careful to get everyone out of the tent. Karin replied that she had expected her old friend to get straight to the point without much foreplay. Rast said that he had been right, for he had expected it to be the carefree life of a pioneer. A measured, quiet life, with the sun setting over a land devoid of magic. When he had finished describing his expectations, Rast asked what it was all about. Karen explained that the magic here is harmful to all plants, and that is why it is so important to eliminate this magic. Otherwise, you won't see new crops. Karen said that the task was not easy, but Rast didn't think she would ask for something simple. Karen explained that the young alchemist Rast would first have to deal with treating a local disease that had spread widely in this camp, and she'd like to ask Rast to deal with the cause of the occurrence, its outbreaks. Karen said that a special tent had been prepared for Rast, and he could use it at his discretion. Rast thought about the difficult task and replied that he understood and decided to go to the tent. Rast tried to understand what Karen meant by the words local disease and whether it meant that the symptoms of the malady had only begun to appear after arriving at this particular camp. Rast decided to postpone the theories for later, but first to find out and evaluate how this strange disease was manifesting itself. Rust said hello to the locals and noticed their strange looks. The people seemed to him extremely wary. Rust realized that in addition to dealing with the disease, he had to gain the trust of these people. The sisters pointed to the tent and said that it belonged to Rast now. The young alchemist thought it was a good thing he had met the sisters first. He noticed one of them, Roa, 
keeping an eye on him. Suddenly, Roa advised Rast to do everything not to shame Mistress Karen, otherwise he would not be forgiven. Ari immediately reminded her sister about restraint and manners. Rast could not find anything to say, but thought that he had jumped to conclusions about the usefulness of the meeting with his sisters. Rast looked around the tent and was glad that it was a one-person tent and would be more comfortable. It was larger than he had expected, though. Rust felt that such privileges for him would send a silent message to the other campers, and he had yet to understand their reaction to his stay. Once inside the tent, Rast realized that it was completely devoid of any furniture and decided that Karin knew him well after all. The young alchemist immediately decided to get ready while he had time until the two sisters started bringing him patients. Rast set to work and decided to first treat the carpet with purification and put it on the floor, because it would be much better that way. And this would be a simple preparation of the tent floor's dust and moisture protection. Putting the baby lizard in a secluded place, Rust said that although he rarely used some method lately, but here it would come in handy. Applying deployment, he created a rose manifestation, and an alchemical rose appeared in the middle of the tent. Rast thought that despite its appearance, the rose was actually as useful as a hippopotamus. Rast asked the rose to first of all reinforce the sleeping place of the lizard cub properly. Instantly, the thorny branches wrapped around the lizard cub's sleeping place, forming a sort of protective cocoon. Rast thanked the alchemical rose and recognized that it had worked very well. Next, Rast decided that all that was left was to set up the tent in a similar fashion to a normal camp setting. The young alchemist created flooring for insulation and ensured good air circulation in the room. Then it was the turn of the bed, chair, and desk. Rast also thought that he would need a desk for his experiments because he would need one. Rust remembered that he had created an alchemical rose during his student days. Back then he had used it for field research and other needs and always took it with him on all his expeditions. Though now it had only become a good memory from the distant past. When a few of the boys, led by Karin, had dropped by his place and made themselves at home. Rast's thoughts were interrupted by the voice of one of the nurses, who announced that she had brought a man who had contracted a local disease and asked if he could come in. Rust allowed the patient to enter and thought that now his new job at the new place had finally begun. The patient complained that he had a general lethargy throughout his body. Yes, and in general, he gets tired pretty quickly and also feels heavy in his legs. Rast replied that he understood and promised to make suitable potions to address these symptoms. Rast realized that it took a whole day to recognize and treat the symptoms. The young alchemist decided that temporary measures should be taken first, but the top priority of course was complete healing. It would be good if the true cause could be determined from the accompanying signs. But if of course the whole situation would allow for a slow and thorough investigation. The patient remembered and said that since yesterday evening he had felt a slight numbness in his right arm. Rust thought about the problem and decided that there was a risk of paralysis. And if that was the case, there was a risk of irreparable damage. And it looks like it could be more serious than he originally thought. So the fight against the disease promises to be a battle of speed. Rust asked one of the nurses to bring in the next patient for examination. The day turned to evening and Roa announced that the last person was left. Roa marveled at how quickly Rust had gotten everyone in. Rast in turn thanked the girl for a good job. The young alchemist summed up his first day of work with satisfaction. He decided that he had managed to deal with the initial treatment of all the sick people by the end of the day. The last patient complained of extreme fatigue and numbness in his arms and legs. Rast promised to make a potion for him that would restore his body to normal. And after he took the medicine, they would observe the progress of the changes in his condition. Rast thought that he reads the individual peculiarities of each sick person's condition and makes typical auxiliary potions for them, taking into account all the peculiarities. That's all he could do for now, thereby administering symptomatic therapy. Rast gave the sick man a vial of potion, which pleased the man. At the same time, Rust decided that the initial cause of the problem should be determined as soon as possible. After all, some patients could have irreversible health consequences and it was certainly unfortunate that there was an initial delay in starting treatment. The patient, after drinking the potion he received, exclaimed that his hands could move again without problems. Radiating joy, he began to thank the doctor for the help he had received. Rast replied that he was glad to see such an improvement. At the same time, he thought that he was not really a doctor at all. Rust marveled at how much a common, generic potion could bring joy to a person. 
After all, he had never had such an experience in the association. Rast thanked Roa for her help during his work and explained that without her, he would not have been able to cope so quickly. The girl replied without emotion that she was just doing her job, which she was obliged to do. Rast decided to give a small gift and handed the girl a small vial. He explained that it was a potion to relieve fatigue and they could use it together with his sister. The girl was clearly surprised and asked when Rast had time to make it. The alchemist replied that he had a few minutes to spare and had time to create the potion. Roa only thanked the master for the gift and left to her sister, even forgetting to say goodbye. Rast smiled at the girl's reaction and decided that apparently it was very difficult for her to open up to anyone, so he would have to be patient with her. Rast remembered one more thing he had left for today, and that was the lizard baby. But in the meantime, Rust had been lying around preparing an interim report for Karen, in which he left notes he had made during the process of seeing patients. He also added his current conclusions as to the probable cause of the disease. In fact, he had a summary of the results he'd gotten on his first day on the job. Rast reminded himself that the next reports should mention the topic of magical stones, which he had forgotten about. As he walked outside, Rust was surprised to see that it had long since gotten dark. He met two men who looked well, and they immediately thanked the doctor for his help. They confessed that they had not even expected such success from the treatment, because Rast managed to put many of them on their feet in only half a day. One of them said that they had not expected anything else from Mrs. Urj Karin's old friend. Rast advised the boys to take care of themselves and went on his way. Rast remembered how during the day he had felt the distrustful and hard stares of the men just after his arrival in the camp. Rast arrived at Karin's tent and introduced himself to the guard. He explained that he had come with a report on the progress of the fight against the disease and wanted to speak with the lady. Karin's voice came from the tent and called the alchemist inside. The girl wondered if something might be wrong, for it was very late and Rast had come in spite of it. The young alchemist said that he had finished with the initial treatment of the sick residents and provided his report. Karen asked how such a thing could be done in only half a day, and added that Rast was as incredible as ever in his work. She began to read the report with interest, and then asked sadly if there were permanent injuries due to illness. Karen stated that she was truly grateful to Rast for saving her people. The young alchemist replied that he was only doing his job. At the same time, he noticed how sincere Karen was being, even if she only expressed it in a couple words. Rast explained that it was also in his own interest to heal people, as he should work alongside them in the future. Karen agreed with that comment and said that she intended to grab a light snack, suggesting that Rust keep her company. Karen said that she was more than sure that Rust had not eaten anything all day at his job, so she would order a meal for two. Rust admitted he had a little snack of his own during the day, which he usually uses on the road. Karen laughed and asked if Rust was still eating his herbal picks. She joked, so he could call himself a great alchemist after that. It was high time he created something better and tastier. Wiping tears from her eyes, Karen admitted that she hadn't laughed like that in a long time. Karen then asked for more details about the report, but only in normal language, while they waited for their food. Rust, deciding that his friend was still joking, began to explain the details. The next morning Rust sipped his tea thinking that it was very strange as the lizard baby still hadn't woken up. After getting ready and dressed, Rust left the tent where the same two sisters were waiting for him. Immediately came the realization that a new work day had arrived. Rast wished his sisters good morning and asked how they were feeling. Roa and Ari replied that they were fine and thanked him for the potion, which had helped relieve their fatigue. Ari admitted that she was just thrilled to see such an effect of the potion. Ras thought that it was a pity he couldn't see the look on their faces now because they were really happy. The sisters told him that Mrs. Azez Karin told him to accompany Rast and asked him to show him around the camp. Ari asked what Rast himself would like to see first. Rast thought about the options and answered that he would like to see first of all the place where all the food supplies of the camp are stored. Roa said there was no problem with that and offered to follow them. Rast waited one minute and called for the hippogriff. Its appearance made the girls visibly animated and Rast decided that the sisters found the hippo very entertaining. Half an hour later, the sisters led Rust to a strange structure and told him that it was their storehouse and that it was also the storehouse for all their supplies. The sisters went to fetch the manager, who had the key to the door. Rast looked at the dugout and thought that it was probably a monster's lair, which had been converted and used for storing supplies. 
and that's a pretty sensible solution for saving building materials. Rust asked the Hippogriff to let him know if he noticed anything unusual. The young alchemist himself used his deployment to pick up a biolocation pendulum. Rast decided that it was very important to measure the concentration of magical energy in this place. A biolocation pendulum is a special tool for measuring magical energy. And the stronger the oscillation, the more concentrated the energy is in that place. The information obtained by the pendulum is transmitted to the decryption scrolls. Rast decided to start his research with the area around the food warehouse. The pendulum confirmed the alchemist's fears and began to move from side to side. Rast realized that the ground here was literally permeated with particles of magic. Not even microorganisms could survive in such soil, so strong was the magical energy in it. Rust noticed one of the sisters having fun with a hippopotamus and thought, good helpers. As they approached the warehouse doors, the pendulum increased its swing. Rast thought that although there was a rather high concentration of magical particles everywhere, there was nothing suspicious about it. After all, if one were to reason about it, not only the factors of the coolness and darkness of the room were taken into account when choosing where to store food. The fact is that in the wilderness, the abundance of magical particles is usually always higher, because of which microorganisms imperish. So arranging food storage facilities in such a way is a standard practice. And given such a high level of magical particles, it's hard to imagine that some microorganisms typical of this region could have gotten into people's bodies through food. So the reason most likely lies in something that might have been left behind by the monster for which this place used to be a lair. Rast asked Roa if she knew which monster used to live in this cave. The girl replied that as far as she knew a bear had lived in the cave. Rast hesitated and asked what kind of bear it was and if it had any unusual properties. Ari appeared and brought the person in charge of the food supply. The warehouse manager greeted the young alchemist and thanked him for helping his brother. He told him how his brother's limbs had gone numb and he was very depressed, but thanks to Rast's treatment, he was fine now. The stock manager said that if there was anything he could do for Rast, he would certainly do his best. Rast replied that he would keep that in mind and realized that apparently his brother had apparently been to his appointment yesterday and received the potion. Rast explained that he wanted to see the inside of the warehouse and study it for his work. The manager immediately opened the doors and Rust saw the neatly stacked supplies. At first glance he saw nothing special and Rust used the biolocation pendulum. The pendulum reacted much more actively than it had outside and caused the alchemist's mind to think. He decided that the meat stored here was the meat of monster animals. The fruits and resources obtained from the plant monsters were processed extremely carefully. And all these products have been preserved quite well. And there's absolutely no trace of poisoning or anything like that that might have been left by the monster that lived in this cave before. Rast thanked the warehouse manager for his help and said that the doors could now be closed. Rast noticed the hippopotamus shaking his head and asked if he had found something interesting. The animal pointed to a spot and Rust began to explore. Ari asked what it meant that the cause of the beginning of the spread of the disease with this place. Rast replied that it was hard to judge that yet. And first of all, it is necessary to study all the surrounding areas in sequential order. Ari asked where they would now head next. Rast pointed out the direction and explained that next in line to be explored would be the drinking water purification tank. This water tank was meant for drinking and cooking. And because it is an organic resource, it was decided to distribute the water and even shares to all areas. Rust said that might be exactly what they are looking for. He thought the tank looked like some sort of outdated magical tool. However, it did a good job of purifying the water, and at a glance there didn't seem to be any problems with any of the component parts of the device. And the numbness of the limbs could be caused by some poisonous substances that had gotten into the body with water or food, so Rast decided to check the food supplies first. But from the looks of it, this was not going to be an easy mystery to solve. Rust stood there in utter bewilderment, and Ari suggested that he stop for lunch. For a moment, Rast realized that the girl was getting too close. He smiled as he realized how she had startled him so ridiculously and replied that a snack would be nice. Though in doing so, the alchemist thought it was still rather unusual to receive a dinner invitation from these two mysterious girls. Rast guessed the reason for their concern and asked if Mistress Karin had told them to take care of his meals while accompanying him. The girls froze in surprise, amusing Rast. So he asked them not to worry and explained that he could look after himself quite well. 
the alchemist was reminded of his youthful memories and had a picture in his mind's eye of how the very young Karen used to make him eat all the time, even while he was working. Russ said that he was happy to listen to his sisters and would be happy to have lunch with them. The girls visibly calmed down after the awkward moment and suggested we head to the camp dining hall. Rast left the choice of food to the two sisters and immediately sat down at a table. Ari and Roa argued a bit about who was in charge and went to the table together. Rast didn't forget about his faithful hippogriff because he needed to eat too. The young alchemist generously poured crushed magic stones into a plate and invited the hippo to start eating. Hippopotamuses could only eat such food in certain quantities, as beasts created by alchemy could suffer if they consumed too much or too little magic particles. The hippopotamus began to slurp, its drool flying far and wide. Rast had always loved to watch this cute beast pounce on food. This was what he was caught doing by his sisters, who informed him that they had gotten some food. The main item on the menu was a dish that was made from heavily pulverized grains. It was excellent for nourishing a person and was good for storing. The side dish was made from fried edible parts of local monster plants with oil. The oil was also obtained from monsters and the whole thing was generously dusted with seasonings. There was also smoked meat of monsters that were hunted during outings. It was smoked to increase its shelf life by using Kajero wood shavings, which added a spicy taste and a special flavor. Although this menu is quite simple, the chef's ingenuity is quite evident. Rast appreciated the quality of the cooking and decided that he could quite enjoy his meal even in such a modest dining room. Rust asked if all the people living in the camp ate in this dining hall. Ari explained that it was mostly single people who ate in the dining hall, and those with families preferred to cook at home with their families. Rust noticed that it reminded him a lot of the university cafeteria. Rust took out a scroll and began to read. He had the feeling that both sisters were staring at him intensely, even through the bandages on their faces, as if they had something important to say. Rast asked both of them at once if they had noticed any similarities between those who had fallen ill, and if they knew anyone who had gotten sick today. Ari advised the alchemist not to think about work at least while eating and to get some rest. Roa answered for the two that they hadn't heard of any new cases of illness today. As for the similarities, they hadn't noticed anything unusual or highly conspicuous. Rast thanked them for the information and noticed Roa thinking about something. She exclaimed that there were a lot of lonely people among the sick. Ari concurred with her sister's observation and added that those who fell ill were certainly not all lonely people, but there were indeed an order of magnitude more of them than family people. Roa clarified that only people from single tents were being brought in for checkups. Rast seized on the clue and decided that there was something suspicious about that. He asked if he had correctly understood that this dining hall catered to mostly single people. The girls answered in one voice that this was exactly the case. Forgetting about food, the young alchemist busied himself with deciphering and manifesting. Suddenly, he changed his face and a flustered Ari asked what was wrong. Rast gestured for him to stay out of the way and after a couple seconds, he exclaimed that he had found what he needed. Rust yelled for both sisters to stop eating immediately. Rust explained that this food, albeit a little, has monster poison in it. It affects the nervous system, which is why the symptoms are what they are. Rast thought for a moment and started looking for the right ingredient. Ari shouted to the entire dining room for everyone to stop eating and put their plates away as there could be poison in the food. Rast, meanwhile, finished looking for the right component and said that he had seen it before. He continued to ponder and became more and more alarmed by the sight of his sisters. Ari could not bear the torture of curiosity and asked if Master Rast had managed to find out anything. The young alchemist cheerfully replied that he had almost figured it out. Rast decided for himself that there was no problem with the water purification tank, and it was all about the other source of the problem. Rust went with his sisters to the kitchen. He was met by the woman who she said was in charge of the kitchen. In an agitated voice, she inquired if there was something wrong with the food prepared in her kitchen. Rast apologized for disturbing her and for pulling her away. The young alchemist explained that he was dealing with the issue of an aggravation of a local disease at the behest of Mistress Karen. Rast asked permission to take a tour of the kitchen as he was curious about something. Once in the kitchen, Rast carefully inspected the surroundings and realized that here was just the expected readings. Rast asked Roa to deliver his message to Miss Karen as soon as possible. The kitchen mistress was also asked by Rast to help him with some business. 
After the mystery, Rast suggested that they meet in an hour at Mistress Karin's tent and promised to explain everything there. An hour later, as planned, the kitchen mistress and the person in charge of the Lonely People's tents were at Karin's tent, in addition to Karin and her sisters. Karin immediately asked what Rast meant by the message that the disease had been completely resolved. Rast replied that he was ready to begin the story by explaining the cause of the disease. Russ said that there was a pond upstream from the camp, and that there was a monster whose venom affected the nervous system. Karin agreed that the camp of course uses the water that comes from this pond, but do not forget that the water storage tank is engaged in purification. And while it may not be the most advanced, it could handle neutralizing a simple poisonous substance quite well. Rast agrees, and confirms that the tank does a good job of purifying water, so the crux of the problem is completely beside the point. Karen asked what then is the problem. Rust stated that it is not the treated drinking water that is the problem, but the water that is used for domestic use, washing dishes and doing laundry. Karen responded that who would have thought. Rast explained that as it turned out, the water for washing dishes and laundry was used directly from the river. Also, the alchemist said that he had inspected the loner's tent not too long ago. And on the dishes and clothes of that man were traces of the same poisonous substance that affected the nervous system of the patients. And that's how the poison accumulated in the body little by little, gradually penetrating through the skin and also through the mouth when eating. Ari said that now it was clear why there were so many sick people among the loners who mostly ate in the common dining room. The kitchen hostess was annoyed and said that she was very sorry because she had not even helped to imagine that this would happen. The person in charge of the singles tents admitted his guilt and expressed his willingness to accept full responsibility for the consequences. Karen replied that there was no need to do so. After all, the water being treated in the tank is strictly rationed and the one who made that decision was herself. And no one else can be held responsible for it but her. Karen said that since they now know the full extent of the problem, they need to revise the water regulations for all sites. And they also need to deal with the source of the contamination, that monster that lives in the pond upstream of the river. Rust cheerfully stated that he had already dealt with that problem when he rescued a baby white jasper. Catching the surprised looks, Rust explained that he was misunderstood and it was an accident, and the monster had actually been killed by a hippopotamus. Karen asked if Rust could predict the future, to which the alchemist replied that unfortunately he could not. Rast confirmed that the composition of the poison was identical, so there was no doubt that it was the same monster. Karen summarized that Rast had not only cured the sick in one day, determined the cause of the disease the next day, but had also killed the monster that had caused the infection in the first place. Roa admitted that this was beyond the bounds of decency. Rast explained that the monster had died not so long ago, so he thought it would be better not to use the river water for a while. It would also be good to get rid of the water that is stored for household needs because it will cause harm. And since the source of the contamination has already been eliminated, it will be possible to resume the use of river water in a few days. Rust asked the hippopotamus if there were no more monsters like that in the pond. The hippopotamus nodded his head in the negative, which reassured everyone present. Rast informed Karin more officially that her order to find the cause of the outbreak and treat the affected people had been carried out. Karen replied that she, as well as the whole settlement, was grateful for the brilliant performance of the task. Rast himself had exceeded her expectations by doing something she could not have imagined. Rast explained that this insidious poison was delivered in small portions into people's bodies and accumulated in them gradually. Therefore, there was a possibility that the disease could still manifest itself in those who suffered from it later on. Rast promised to continue the treatment if there were any problematic changes in people's condition. The alchemist also asked that such cases be reported to him immediately. Rast asked Karin to give him some funds so that he could personally take care of the expansion and modernization of the water storage tank. Karin agreed to this proposal and promised to fund the work. Thus came to an end Rast's first mission in his new position. He decided that now he could finally start enjoying life away from the hustle and bustle of the city. Although in Rust's mind, he shouldn't have been so optimistic about everything. After all, at the moment he knew nothing about what was going on in the Alchemical Association and what to expect from it. The two sisters Roa and Ari found themselves alone in an alley called Pottery Street. Ari asked what Roa was thinking. Roa replied that apparently Ari meant what her opinion of Master Rasta was. 
The sisters were sent by the alchemist Rasta to the alley with the task of buying water bottles that should be as large as possible. Roa admitted that she thought Master Rast was a bit of an unusual person with excellent alchemical abilities. And the first time she looked at Master Rast, it felt like the level of his martial skills was immeasurable. And even if the two of them were to engage in a fight with him, they would most likely lose at that moment. And when the sisters realized that they couldn't even compete with his alchemy monster behemoth, it came as a real shock to them. Both sisters take great pride in their position among Karin Sama's subordinates, for they are considered the best of the best. And this is probably the reason for the mixed feelings from Master Rast on their part. And his astonishing strength is the cause of real envy. Both sisters, and especially Roa, is full of pride for all the training they went through together. However, a man so skilled in alchemy and possessing drastically different skills from their powers is just as interesting to the sisters. Roa, on the other hand, was even more interested in Master Rasta than sometimes Ari, as the older sister would like to condemn her for such an attitude. But Ari could not dare to do so, because deep down she shared her feelings, but unlike Roa kept her worries to herself. Ari suggested to her sister to look in a suitable store, and finally having decided with a choice, they ordered delivery of the purchased goods. Then they went to their next destination, the Magic Tool Store. The atmosphere in the Magic Quarter seemed more tense than the Pottery Street, and the frowning faces of the passers-by and merchants were strongly conspicuous. The sisters didn't feel any detrimental influence, but something still made them uneasy about the place. In the end, they decided that it was the abundance of magic stores around them that was to blame, and decided to make their way to the store that Rust had indicated to them. After opening the massive door, the sisters found themselves inside, where they were greeted by the shopkeeper. The sisters knew about her from Master Rast's words, but they were surprised at how young she looked. The store was stocked with various magical tools, though there were some noticeable empty shelves in some places. The sisters explained that they would like to offer something for sale. The shopkeeper wondered who had referred them to her store. The shopkeeper looked at the sisters with an appraising gaze and noticed that, judging by their clothes, they didn't look like alchemists. But Ari decided to provide more information and placed a letter and a vial of liquid on the table. The shopkeeper read the message with interest. Eventually she recognized Master Rast's seal, and it became obvious that the two young girls were his messengers. Ari explained that they had indeed been sent by Master Rast to sell the potion, and asked if they could make the transaction in the store. The proprietress said yes, and stated that high-quality potions themselves were very rare these days. And besides, the potions prepared by Mr. Rast are always of excellent quality. Therefore, she would gladly buy this vial. The shopkeeper said that she had one comment and pointed out that the letter from Master Rast said that the potion should be sold at a set price. Ari asked if the shopkeeper was not happy with the set price, since it was Master Rast's own instruction. The hostess replied that it was not like that at all, but rather the opposite. She pointed out that the prices of alchemical goods were constantly rising. All of this is because of some problems with the delivery of goods from the Alchemists Association. And that's why such potions would cost many times more now. The sisters were surprised at the openness and honesty of the shopkeeper and understood why Master Rast vouched for her and said he trusted her. Ari replied that there was nothing wrong with the difference in price and that they would be satisfied with the regular price. The mistress did not want to get into any more arguments about the price and promised to have the money ready. Soon the hostess gave the sisters an impressive sack of money, which they were surprised to see. They couldn't believe that such a huge amount of money was only for the price. It was to be expected from Master Rasta though, as his goods were well priced. Ari reminded her sister that she had been told to use the money for travel expenses. Then she offered Roa something tasty to eat. The girls went to the nearest establishment and started eating. The event that had led them to this assignment had happened only a day earlier, or rather a little more. Before Rastasan arrived, Miss Karin had invited several healers to the camp. But in the end, all of those people gave up before they could deal with the illness. In addition, those of them who were afraid of catching it themselves simply fled due to fear. And it was probably to the credit of those first healers who had spread the rumor of the incurable disease. The Healers Guild continued to reject Miss Karen's requests, which threatened to cause even more trouble. And then, as if by magic, Master Rast appeared in the camp. They, the loyal servants, acted as Mistress Karin had commanded. On her orders, they divided the sick campers among themselves and took them to Master Rast for examination. 
Some of the people could no longer move freely because of numb limbs, and some of them were foggy with fever. And always, when they brought a new patient to the tent, the previous one came out of it fresh and completely healthy. Master Rast managed to treat the disease almost in the blink of an eye, and even identified the true cause of the disease. And in addition, he had also killed the monster that was the cause of the disease. It was clear that Master Rast was special, even among alchemists. Ari had the courage to tell her sister that they could ask Master Rast for help with their eyes. When Roa heard such a suggestion, she immediately stopped eating. And then, after a short thought, both sisters looked at each other intently and nodded silently, expressing their general agreement. The blacksmith alchemist Liharzam was in a foul mood and came to the Alchemical Association's special equipment storehouse. Looking through the shelves, he resented why he was the one who had to deal with all of this. Liharzam resented that it was all because of Rast. After all, that foolish boy was not at all grateful to the Alchemist Association. For some inexplicable reason, the entire Alchemists Association had too many problems lately. And all the Master Alchemists had to leave their jobs to deal with them. A lot of things in this vault were more than just dangerous and needed especially reverent handling. Some of the monster's materials could even be undermined without proper care in handling them. It used to be handled by a specialist, which was Rust, but the department he worked in was shut down due to budget cuts. And then there was no one to keep track of all this hazardous material. And gradually, one problem after another began to emerge. There was even an explosion of the dense slime liquids of the scavengers. Liharzem tried to enter one of the doors, but was unable to do so, as the entrance was restricted due to the presence of Class 1 threat materials, which can only be handled by those with the rank of Master. If not for this strict rule, Liharzam could have sent his assistants to do the job instead of himself. Tortake informed the angry blacksmith alchemist that the head of the Armor Association was urgently calling for him and shouted heavily. Liharzam bellowed that he wasn't expecting good news. He also ordered Tortake that when someone of master rank returned, he should tell him to finish up here in the warehouse with everything. Tortake reminded him that he was only a novice and could not tell the masters where to clean up and there was no telling when any of the masters might return. But Liharzam did not answer anything and went down the corridor, spreading a foul stench. Tortake noticed that the door was negligently left unlocked and hurried to close it before the magical elements penetrated into the warehouse. But this was not possible for the novice alchemist, as a master rank medallion was needed to seal the door. Without thinking of anything, Tordake decided to just stand at the entrance to the association and wait for one of the masters. The warehouse, however, remained open, and the magical particles gradually began their destructive process. The vice president of the Armament Association, Gan, was beyond furious. He shouted, trying to figure out how much longer he had to wait since they had missed all the deadlines. The aide tried to explain to you that the whole problem was that the bulk of the needed materials for the conversion were being delayed. But vice president Gan yelled that he had already heard all this. Gen said that everything about the deadline down to the second is spelled out in the contract. And all the equipment and materials should have already been delivered to the army so that it would be ready for the next war. Gan added that they should not rely on the fact that all this would be a simple fine because it was a very serious problem. The vice president asked where is Liharzem now, after all he had called him long ago. A few minutes later Liharzem appeared and apologized for his tardiness. The stench from him hit his nose sharply, which made the vice president even more angry. Gan demanded that. Likarzem not to come any closer to him. The vice president asked what was going on, and whether it was normal for a master alchemist to come in such an inappropriate manner to a meeting with a powerful business partner. Likarzem began to realize that it was because of the scavenger slime he was cleaning up. And he was in such a hurry that he hadn't even noticed the bad odor, or had gotten used to it while he was in the warehouse. Gan wondered if the alchemist blacksmith had decided to mess with him. The insults were not the simplest and Liharzem was quite disappointed in today. He apologized for his transgression and promised to change his clothes immediately. But the vice president said he would not waste any more time waiting and asked when Liharzem would deliver what he had promised. The cunning blacksmith couldn't remember what it was all about and transferred the question to Sabis, who in turn was having a choking attack from the stench. Without waiting for an answer, Liharzam told the vice president that everything would be done by tomorrow. Gan immediately advised the blacksmith alchemist not to forget his words. The staff of the weapon alchemy department were shocked at such a promise from Liharzam, for it was impossible to fulfill the order by tomorrow. 
Leharzim gathered all the employees and even those who were on vacation. He reminded them that their department must provide the magical circuits that change attributes into association. Sabas confirmed that this is exactly what they promised to fulfill on time, to provide the schematics that change the magical elements to fire elements. And apparently this is needed to create firearms for the army. Leharzim asked what the problem was then, since they were late on the order, since there was no problem with this before. Sabas replied that the department was having problems with the lack of distilled water, and especially with the quality of the water, which had deteriorated a lot recently. Liharzam took umbrage and reminded him that distilled water was a basic element that a creator and even an apprentice should be able to create. Tordake provided a magic circuit and a device to test the operation of magic circuits and explained that this board was made from distilled water from production. Liharzam said he saw no problem and decided to check it out himself. He figured there were enough magical elements in the crystal, and all he had to do was activate it, and it would turn the magical elements into fire. But in the end, nothing happened, and he asked why there wasn't enough energy. The alchemists explained that the emission of magic elements was not too stable. Tortate confirmed that this was the case. He said that it would be a good idea to use the water that Master Rast had created. Because of its quality, it could solve the problem with the stability of the energy. Leharzim squealed that no one should dare say Rast's name in front of him. And the alchemists were once again reminded of the incredible envy that Leharzim had always felt for Rast. The blacksmith alchemist declared that he himself would create far better distilled water so they would quickly finish creating the magical circuits. After a few hours, Leharzim asked how they liked his distilled water and asked for a report on the work. Sabas reported that the results were barely above normal and did not pass the safety limits. And the risk of the quality of the product going down because of this is increasing. Sabas thought that he now understood the difference in quality between this water and Master Rast's distilled water because the results spoke for themselves. Although such a thing should not be spoken aloud, as Leharzam might have a stroke. In the end, Sabas said that in general, the readings were up to standard. Leherzam here ordered to continue creating and do it as fast as possible. The alchemists realizing the nonsense of what was going on still got to work. Tortake looked at his watch and decided that it was late and it was time to rest. But his drowsiness was broken by an explosion. He immediately remembered that he had left the door of the vault open and realized that the slime could have stroked the magical elements and caused trouble. Meanwhile, the alchemists were trying to fight the slime that had escaped from the vault and had noticeably increased in size. The slime was literally devouring everything in its path, and the alchemists began to use whatever they could. Leherzim ordered them to stop throwing fire, as it would damage the box of magical circuits. But no one listened to his words, panic gripped everyone, and the blacksmith alchemist himself was covered in slime. The members of the department enjoyed the spectacle of the slime selling the boss, and then spitting him out. Liharzam's appearance was so shabby and the stench so strong that it was clear that he had gotten a pretty good deal. Eventually, the alchemists were able to deal with the slime invasion and put it away in a crate. Then everyone started cleaning up the lab, which was incredibly dirty and smelly. The only thing that made the alchemists happy was that Liharzam had gone away and wasn't bothering anyone else. Sabas asked Skini to deliver the magical schematics of the Armament Association first thing tomorrow morning. The girl asked if she really needed to pick up all those crates. But Sabas decided that such a thing was beyond her and advised her to use magical beasts for transportation. Karen's morning began at dawn. She noticed that her hair was disheveled in her sleep, but Karen didn't bother to fix it. She figured her hair would settle down sooner or later. As soon as she woke up, she had a good breakfast. Most mornings, she likes to eat a good grilled steak. But since food is limited here, Karin snacks on a sheet of the same as her subordinates. Then she works out with her subordinates. Then she takes a morning shower to wash off all the sweat. And does some paperwork. But as soon as another problem comes up, Karin meets it with a smile on her face. She always says that there's no need to worry and everything will be fine. Even during her battles, in the most difficult situations, she doesn't lose faith in the best. And tries to reassure her subordinates. Very often at night, she sees the same dream, the death of a loved one on the battlefield. And when her subordinates were exposed to a threat unrelated to battle, when she realized how powerless she was, Master Rast, her old friend, came to her aid. And when the lives of her men could have been like water through his fingers, he saved them from imminent doom. And one good fellow, who was as addicted to finding something new as she was, 
left the association as soon as she could get in touch with him. She figured his affairs at the association weren't exactly good since he accepted her offer without a second thought. And since he had started working for her, Karen decided to give him the freedom and encouragement he had always deserved. Karen asked where Rast had decided to go so soon. The young alchemist explained that he had been busy the last few days, so he wanted to go get some materials and take a walk. Karen asked Rast to be careful not to stay out too long. Karen reminded him again how much she was grateful to him for saving her people. She promised, as Admiral of the Dominion, to get him anything he wanted. Rast was surprised at the suddenness of the words, but didn't think much of it. Karen explained that she just wanted to tell him that he could rely on her in any situation and to remember that she was always there for him. Karen reminded her old friend of his quality of doing everything on his own and not asking for help. But that quality is also his flaw at the same time. Karen asked if he really thought it was easier and faster to do everything by himself than with the help of someone else. Rast thought about the words and remembered his foes from the Alchemical Association. Karen explained that she was just worried about him. That one day he would get too tired of his efforts and reminded him that when he did everything himself, not all people noticed his work. Karen advised Rust to learn to trust his associates and then they wouldn't let him down. Rast replied that he would definitely heed her words and thought that she had made a real leader. The alchemist also promised to pamper herself and relax in the near future. Karen's days would start at dawn so that her long nights would be at least a little shorter. Karen was glad to have a good conversation and decided, once again, to work hard during the day. The young alchemist was pleased with himself riding the behemoth. He was heading back to camp after being away for a few days. Karin had budgeted for water storage problems, and now he had all the materials he needed. Rast decided that now they could get down to business as soon as they got the water jugs. Rust was happy, as he was even able to catch a few monsters besides the one he had originally targeted. He praised himself for his foresight as he had brought extra scrolls for the different monsters. Since using a scroll that didn't suit a certain kind of monster could damage the materials and ruin their effectiveness. Hearing a familiar noise in the distance young, the alchemist said that they were almost at the camp already. The locals greeted their savior cheerfully and began to ask how the hunt had gone and if he had hurt himself during the journey. Rast was happy to receive such a welcome and felt how excited everyone was about the news of the possibility of increasing the local water supply. The people continued to greet Rast, and he decided to meet the man who was in charge of the water supply. Rast told Litna that he was just the man he wanted to talk to, and was glad he had found him so quickly. Rast said that when he was hunting monsters, he thought that the parts not suitable for alchemy might be edible, so he took them with him, and they might help increase the settlement's water supply. Litna thanked Rast for his help and promised to buy them. Rast explained that he had already gotten the materials he needed from them and had not processed them much more. Litna replied that there was no problem with that. Rast took the materials to the monster cutting area where many people had already gathered. The young alchemist was surprised at how curious the locals could be. Everyone wanted to see the monsters as soon as possible and tried to hurry Rust up. The young alchemist didn't bother people for a long time and took out scrolls to summon the captured monsters. He asked if they liked the catch and were willing to buy it. The people were shocked by the rich catch as they didn't expect to see four male two-lined buffalo. Everyone began to discuss how the young alchemist had managed to overcome such dangerous beasts as they moved in groups. Immediately they heard discussions about how much food could be made from the meat and the rest would find a use. Litna exclaimed that these monsters were in perfect condition and immediately summoned two subordinates. Rast said that there were more big monsters and he would just keep taking them out. Next were the Hell Horse, a horse-type monster with three heads. Its meat went great with cheese and its skin was prized as a great material for clothing. Also featured was the Mole Bear, whose rarity was rated at six stars. Its internal organs were widely used for medical purposes and its fur was used to make expensive jewelry. Next, Rast brought out a thousand rats of various sizes. Although they required care when cutting them up, due to their poisonous parts, their meat tasted wonderful. Litna, not expecting such a huge number of trophies, said that they were too many. Rast thought that he could have caught more if he had brought more scrolls with him. The monster splitter admitted that he hadn't even seen some of them and was somehow even frozen by the amount of work to be done. He said that Rust had defeated a whole bunch of incredibly dangerous monsters and had done it alone, so he would like to fight him one day to experience real strength and test himself. 
The young alchemist was pleased to see such an appreciation of his abilities and said that he had to go. He asked to be informed when they finished evaluating the monsters and decided on the amount. Walking into his tent, Rast told his Rose that here he was back. He thanked her for taking care of the baby lizardman in his absence, giving him potions and keeping an eye on his condition. Even though his condition hadn't changed, at least that meant he wasn't getting worse, which was a positive. Rast said that maintaining his condition is hard, because he can't even use the same magic element potions for him that he uses for humans. Since monsters can die from an excess of magic elements, and if there aren't enough magic elements to kill the monster, then in that case, the monster might just become insane. They need to be controlled for a long time, and since Alchemy Rose is very meticulous, he can completely rely on her during such hard times. Rast asked Rose to continue treating the baby and praised him for his efforts. Soon, Rast learned of the return of the sisters, who had delivered everything they needed from the city. The young alchemist thanked them for their help and told them that the jars they had bought were really good. Ari replied that there was no problem with the purchase of the jugs and everything went smoothly. Rast inspected the jugs and made sure they were new, never finding any cracks or scuffs. Rast thought the idea of sending his sisters shopping was a good one, as they could quietly prevent all problems with power in their eyes. Ari said that they had noticed the tense atmosphere in the capital. Some goods had become much more expensive. Rast immediately asked how Mrs. Dis's Karen felt about it. But Ari replied that they immediately informed her about the problems with prices and goods. Rast thought it was good that Karin was aware of it, and for some reason remembered Li Herzan, who in turn sneezed somewhere very far away. Rast dismissed his anxious thoughts and decided that now that all the ingredients were ready, he should install the water purification system. And to begin with, take the first couple steps. Rast thought it should be an easy transformation and began the activation process, followed by the purification. Rast said it would be easy with the hardness of diamond dust set to maximum. And at the command of his hands, the mini tornado sparkled with brilliant particles. Next, the young alchemist added crystal clear water, as it was necessary to release magical energy, keeping the water pure. Crystal clear water obeys the laws of physics. And the solution begins to increase its entropy, which has been reduced to zero, thereby dissolving the nearest particles and powder from the magic stone. Rast exclaimed that everything was ready and demonstrated the ink for writing magical diagrams. Ari, who was watching the process, said it was incredible. Rast noticed how interested Ari was in his work and proceeded to free himself from the constraints of gravity in order to solve the magical circuitry. Rast then set about finding the right page to purify the water. Finding what was needed, the young alchemist began the deciphering process and soon the magical water purification diagram was ready to be read. The young alchemist with the help of the created design and the magic solution was able to fix and make the magic circuit part of a huge jug. Rast pleased with himself, said that now he needed to insert the magic crystal for power and everything would be ready. Once the crystal was fixed, Rast exclaimed that he would do the same with the other jug. The process was repeated and soon the jugs were ready. Surprised Ari, asked if they could use the water now as much as they wanted. But Rast replied that this was just the beginning. He explained that at this stage, it is just a vessel for water. And he wants to make another magical item with which they won't even need to draw water themselves. Ari cried out in amazement that such a thing could be done, and then confessed that she wanted to see it and Rast gladly invited her to come along. Once at the pond, Rust asked the hippo to check the water again for danger and obediently, the animal rushed forward. Rust said he would make a magic item to draw water from the pond. The young alchemist decided to make the object out of a strong, water-resistant material. At the same time, it had to be coated with a composition with the odor of poison from the tentacles of the catfish to scare away other monsters. And also the magic stone of the unusual monster should be placed in the object. To the young alchemist's surprise, the hippopotamus pulled another dangerous monster out of the water and Rust thanked him for his help. Rust realized that the pond was finally being inhabited by other monsters, which was possible after the catfish monster disappeared. It was obvious from the reaction and prey of the hippo that all the new inhabitants of the pond are rather small creatures. Finishing with the creation of the special device, Rust said that there was only a little bit of patience left. Ari asked if he understood correctly that Rast was using an unusual monster stone. The young alchemist replied that it was a correct observation and it was the reason he had to go hunting for such a monster. 
Rast told the curious girl had to go to the volcano itself. Ari asked what kind of beast was used to obtain such a stone. The young alchemist told that he managed to catch a monster called Paralyzing Cloud. Ari, from the unexpected answer, stated that it had a special danger rank and could not be defeated by any physical attacks. Rast calmly replied that that was the case and she was right. The young alchemist decided to make a device so that he could alert them himself if the reservoir suddenly dried up. And he decided to set a special task so that it would receive the communication to switch. Having finished what he had planned, Rast announced that it was now ready and tried switching. Ari asked how the magic item would function and what it was even called. Rast, as the author, said that since he invented it, there was no name for it yet. But it would be nice to call it a cloud water distributor. Ari, watching how the unexplored device began to work, said that it turns water into clouds and asked if it really makes water boil. Rast explained that it would take a lot of resources to heat that much water. And the magic stone of the paralyzing cloud is perfectly suited for this process. After all, Paralyzing Cloud is a cloud monster, and she has a magic crystal in her body. And to rewrite the laws of physics around it, the monster uses magic. So with this ability, he can turn water into clouds, and keep them from dissipating. And in essence, this device copies and looks just like the cloud monster. But its body is actually a magical crystal. Ari said that the clouds do come together and move toward the jars in the camp. Rast recalled how he wrote another magic circle on the jugs so that it becomes the cloud's destination. And once the clouds reach their destination, the magic that changes the laws of physics is turned off and the clouds turn back into water. Ari marveled at this incredible way of transporting water and said she could hardly believe it. Rast said that of course any action is better than a thousand words and suggested the girl to try to dispel the clouds. Ari immediately used her spear to attack the slightly transparent clot, but it had no effect at all. Ras said that immunity to attacks is one of the advantages. After all, in these parts, monsters could destroy pipes if one tried to use normal water pipes. And there wouldn't be enough strength to constantly drive away monsters throughout the entire pipe. The girl watched the process of bringing water to the camp with admiration, and Rast was glad she was so interested in it. Eventually, the young alchemist suggested going back to the camp to see how things were going there. Alchemy involves three basic techniques. The first is the manipulation of life itself, and its pinnacle is the transmutation of beasts. The second is the control of magical elements, which allows for the creation of various potions. And the third is affecting life with the elements, and it culminates in the creation of magical items. Alchemists who have mastered all three techniques become enlightened. Ras said it went well, and it looks like all the jars have been filled. Therefore, the work is over for the day. Ari said that Master Rast was called by Mistress Karin. The young alchemist wondered if something had happened while he was away from the camp and replied that he was going to Karin's immediately. Lady Karin apologized for disturbing Rast and offered him a look at the message. Rast took the papers and realized there were two communication parchments one of which was still sealed. Karen admitted that she was surprised at how fast Rast could do things. After all, a normal alchemist would have spent at least a few days just working with the jars, and there was no telling how long it would take to purify the water. Rast explained that he needed a little more time to write the magical schematics, and then he could start testing the process. At the same time, he noticed that the letter itself was addressed specifically to Karen. Rast thought that there was nothing wrong with him reading her letter since she had given him permission to do so. But under different circumstances, he would not have done so. What surprised the young alchemist was that the letter was from Tom's old age. And it was unclear if the headman had been able to discuss the procedure for selling magic stones with his feudal lord. Karen said that she was surprised by the message even though the headman had warned her earlier. Rast replied that he thought the terms were quite good. Karen exclaimed that the conditions were more than good, they were incredible. The girl sharply approached the alchemist and asked what the trick was. Rast asked to loosen his grip, for his clothes were already fraying at the seams. Karen apologized for the extra emotion and immediately loosened her grip. Rast was relieved to think that if she had pulled harder, she might have torn his head off. Karen thought that the offer was very favorable and it would cost her practically nothing, and the benefits promised to be good. Rast, however, remembered that he had already told her the whole point, and warned that most likely she would get a business offer for magic stones from a neighboring feudal lord. And later he had said again that the feudal lord might ask about trading magic stones. 
though of course the offer itself didn't even specify the type of magic stones themselves. Ras decided to dispel the intrigue and told the girl that there were actually no tricks in tricks and the offer was related to the trade of old magic stones. Karen rounded her eyes, showing the extent of her surprise, and asked that if it was for N32 weapons. She exclaimed if Rast could do all of this, and immediately answered herself that of course Rast could, how could he not, he is a true wizard in alchemy. Karen said that now she understood everything, because such stones can't be found anywhere else, that's all the excitement from the feudal lord. Karen explained that she herself and many of her subordinates are military, and she understands well the price of such things. Rast replied that that was exactly what he expected. Karen said that this trade would intersect with the interests of the capital, would be a direct conflict for a sphere of influence. The young alchemist replied quite cheerfully and calmly that it was expected. Karen resented such calmness from her friend, and finally laughed and said, apparently Rast wanted her to do something about it. Russ said that he had already asked Harold about it. Rast knew Harold well, and it was a mutual friend they had gone to the academy together. Karen was surprised at this revelation, and asked if she remembered correctly that Harold worked in the treasury department. Then Karen looked at the letter and recognized that there seemed to be big trouble brewing in the capital. She didn't think it was that serious even though Ari and Roa had told her about the bad trade situation in the capital. Karen, this is a great opportunity, and it should be done as soon as possible. Rast replied that he was fully prepared and only needed her permission. Karen decided to wait it out now and promised the young alchemist complete freedom and the best possible security for the work. Rast replied that this was good, and he was glad to hear it. The young alchemist thought that such conversations reminded him of their school days, when they also trusted each other completely and discussed any topic. Rast decided to rest a bit lying on the hippo's back, enjoying the light pleasant breeze. Today their trade in magic crystals with the neighboring region opens, and now he was waiting at the entrance to the camp of Ari and Roa. Rast thought that the sun was warming up very nicely here, and his wait wasn't so tedious. At last something appeared in the distance and Roa said she could see them all. The young alchemist didn't see anything and thought it was too far away for his eyes. But trusting the girl, he decided that they would be here soon. Roa reported that one of them was very strong. Rast had entrusted all the negotiations to Karin, so he himself was not privy to all the details. But according to her, negotiations are very boring when all the trump cards are in hand. Based on the contract, the worst and hardest part is on the workers on the other side, and he only turns the fruits of the tree into magic stones and makes a lot of money. Also, he has no restrictions on magic crystals and can decide everything as he sees fit for himself. It turns out that he gains complete freedom of action during his work, although he was asked to warn about changes in production volume. Rust marveled at the incredible conditions Karin had created for him. The only difficulty with this trade was that there was no wheeled transportation infrastructure in the region, and the best option for moving goods remained hard-working mules. If we think about the future, we can realize that the priority for development will be the construction of roads. After all, the development of a remote region with almost no resources requires a decision on priority, both politically and economically. And his bosses, Karin, is in charge of all these complex nuances and hard decisions. Rast noted with regret that there were many different people in the arriving caravan. Roa said that all indications were that they had been attacked. Although no great damage was noticeable, it was likely they were able to fight back with little blood. Suddenly, the young alchemist saw a familiar face and remembered that this was the same old age helpers are. They greeted each other like good friends and congratulated each other on the start of the great trade. Rast asked Zar to be simpler and communicate as before, to which he found no objection. Rast asked what had happened to them, and if someone had really attacked them. Rast offered to heal Zar's arm, and to examine all those injured in the attack. Zar thanked the young alchemist for his help, and said he was an amazing man. It turned out that no one had serious wounds, and Rast offered everyone a universal elixir that he had recently prepared. Although its effectiveness was not too high, it was better than nothing. The young alchemist noticed that only people were hurt, and the mules were uninjured, although they were heavily overloaded. Rast immediately realized that they had been forced to leave a certain number of mules behind and were overloading the cargo on the way. Suddenly, the familiar figure of a beautiful girl appeared among the people, who immediately headed towards the young alchemist. Rast immediately recognized her as the sacred knight and goddess of vengeance, Torah. 
Rast admitted that he had not expected to see her in these parts. And he immediately remembered how he had accidentally managed to rescue this beautiful priest knight. Rast was surprised, for Tora was not alone, but with a whole delegation. The girl Holy Knight said that she had come here specifically to talk to Rast. She happened to be passing by Tom's village and heard them going to this camp, so she asked to join the convoy. Zar added to the story and explained that Tora had saved them from a lot of trouble. Rast replied that this was what was expected of the beautiful Tora. Thus, the young alchemist met two good friends at once. And even the hippopotamus hastened to snuggle up to Taurus out of joy, which frightened him. Rast exclaimed that he was welcome to the Borderlands, which always welcomed guests. The young alchemist realized that this was the beginning of a new chapter in the story of his life. Rast inquired how the girl Knight was doing. Tora replied that everything was fine, and it was thanks only to him. Basis thanked for his rescue and reminded her that she would never forget his kindness. Rast said that he was the one who should thank her for guarding this caravan since the resources they brought back were meant for him. Rast offered Tora in his tent and a cup of tea. It seemed to the young alchemist that the girl knight had something to say to him, but only that she wanted to do it in private. Tora replied that she gladly accepted the invitation and was ready to share the fragrant tea with Rast. Roa was surprised at the stranger's appearance, just as Zar was surprised at their acquaintance. Tora was surprised to find herself in the young alchemist's tent, surprised by the fine furniture. She wondered if all the furniture was made of rose vines. Rast laughed at the girl's reaction and explained that they had no thorns at all, so there was no need to be afraid and you could sit down safely. Rast turned to the girl and offered a flavored tea. Tora asked to be easier to address her since he had saved her life. She reminded him that she had taken an oath that her sword belonged to Rast. And since she had nothing but the god she served, they could leave the unnecessary formalities out of their conversation. Rast agreed and also asked to be called simply by his first name without any formalities. He then offered to drink the tea while it was still hot. The young knight thanked him for his welcome and said that this tea had an incredibly rich flavor. The young alchemist thought that enjoying the flavor of rose tea together and spending time together should help melt the ice between them. Tora, after a bit of thought, indicated that she would like to talk to Rast about the shaman. Rast asked if it was about the shaman who had sent his familiar after her. Tora replied that it was specifically about him. She said that after they had parted ways, the tracks of the familiar had led her to the capital, and the shaman was responsible for the destruction of her church in the first place. And since she herself had been subjected to his curse, he always knew of her whereabouts. Tora explained that because Rast had spared her from the curse, she had been able to track down the shaman and find his secret lair. However, just as she was about to kill him, he managed to slip out of her hands and escape to an unknown destination. Tora showed the item she had found after the shaman's escape and explained that there were a lot of similar things in his lair. Rast asked her to give the thing to him so he could figure out what it was. Deciding that it might be cursed, Rast put on cleaning gloves with curse-cleansing effects. With the decipherment, he began to figure out what the thing was. Rast asked if Tora had shown her find to the Capitals Alchemical Association. The girl explained that she had wanted to go there for help. But when she arrived at the Alchemical Association, there everything was in a terrible state. There were holes of various sizes in the walls, which they were trying to fix in a hurry. The air around the Alchemical Association had a pungent and horrible odor. At the same time, the workers of the association themselves looked like the walking dead. So in the end, she didn't approach them, thinking that they didn't care about her right now. Rast listened to the girl's story and wondered how they had let this happen, because it was obvious that the Alchemical Association was filled with scavenger slime, and it was unclear how they could have left it unattended. Knight Tor explained that it had immediately occurred to her that the item she had found could cause even more trouble, considering where she had brought it from. So she left the rest to her friends in the capital and decided to take it to someone who was familiar with such things and who she herself could trust, and that was how she ended up in this camp. Rast replied that it was a wise decision and praised her for her resourcefulness. Tora asked if it was indeed a dangerous thing. The young alchemist confirmed her fears and explained that it was a magical circuit that turned magical elements into terrible flames. And besides, it was only meant for military use. Rast said that he had absolutely no doubt that it was the Alchemical Association that made this scheme, since such transmutations are characteristic of them. Tora said that in that cache she had found in the shaman's lair, there were also a great many magical weapons. 
And now she herself realized that the chances of a connection between the alchemical association and the shaman who had brought her many troubles were very high. Rast agreed with the night girl's conclusions and said that it was all too suspicious. After all, weapons capable of firing magical elements are very effective against non-human life forms. The monsters die because they receive a large amount of magical elements during a hit from the shot. But humans are not affected in any way by this effectiveness. Even if someone shoots a human by mistake, she will be fine. Because of this, magic cannons are called simple weapons for people who are not trained in the military. But converting the elements results in what is called conversion loss. And there's no need to use something like that against monsters. And if someone needed to turn magical elements with such schemes into flames, it is clearly directed against humans. The girl knight asked how come so many weapons were in the capital and they were going to be used against humans. The young alchemist replied that this was the mystery of who needed and benefited from it. Rast said that there is one problem in all of this. And there is a possibility that when using such a weapon with incomprehensible refinements, that it will simply explode in the hands of the one who will use it. That would make it look like a time bomb. And that's probably the way it was actually designed. And someone had purposely arranged for the weapon to be defective. The girl knight asked how bad it was. And Rast only said that if it was on the scale she had described, it was very bad. The young alchemist thought that judging from the state of the circuitry, it looked like it had been partially eaten by the slime. He remembered how he used to work in an alchemical association, and the sight of such sloppy management upset him. After all, it not only harmed the various devices, but also the reputation of the entire alchemical association. Tora said that she was very happy that she made the right choice and came here to see Rust. She thanked him for his help and reminded him once again that she owed everything to Rust. The young alchemist said that he himself should be grateful to her for such useful information that she was able to bring despite the dangers of the journey. The young knight asked to be taken to Lady Karen as she had something to talk to her about. Rast agreed and admitted that he was going to introduce them himself after this conversation. Tora thanked her for the delicious flavored tea, which she had missed on her journey, and also asked her to pass on her thanks to Rast's hippo, who had also helped her last time. Finished talking and alone, the young alchemist decided it was time to get back to work. Looking at the materials he had brought, Rast decided to hurry up and create as many magic crystals as possible before the caravan left tomorrow. But to do that, he would have to skip the welcome party for the camp guests. Rast thought that this was a great opportunity for good business, and it would be better if he took care of all this sooner, and then the profits would come to him faster. After all, one should not miss such an opportunity which does not happen to everyone. After looking at the wonderful fruit of the Kajal tree, Rast said it was time to do great things. In the evening of the same day, Tora found herself at a dinner party. And sitting across from her and greeting all the guests was the local lord of the lands and Lady Karen. Next to her sat two girls who were apparently her close subordinates. Tora admired the dishes provided, which looked very appetizing. Lady Karen welcomed the guests to her domain. Karen said that the world had indeed turned out to be a small place, and she could not even think that Rasta's familiar was guarding their caravan. Karen also explained that the food was prepared especially for the guests. Having finished with a prayer, Tora tasted a piece of meat and was amazed at the quality of the preparation, for it simply melted in her mouth and the spices complemented its flavor. The girl knight sensed the magical elements in the meat and decided that it was the meat of a high-ranking monster. Tora admitted that she understood the specialty of the dish and asked if it was really the meat of a two-horned monster. Karen called the gourmet guest and replied that it was exactly bighorn, or rather female bighorn. Tora replied that based on the amount of magical elements, it does indeed look like a female. Ari prompted that it was just caught by Rast. Tora replied that she wasn't surprised at all by his hunting abilities. Then Tora drank a cold ale, which she was delighted with. Its fragrant and aromatic taste was wonderfully refreshing and invigorating. Tora said she had not expected to find such quality ale in these lands. Tora asked how the ale was chilled so perfectly. Karen explained that it was done with a special device that Rast had created. Tora thought that Karin was really glad to have Rast living with her. But then suddenly Karin asked what they were doing in Rast's tent. Tora realized that it was the lady who was very worried about her companion. It was right, for she herself had lost her friends who had died at the hands of the shaman. And now all she has to do is pursue him for revenge. The knight's girlfriend explained that she had found a clue in her case, which was based on alchemy, and decided to ask Rast for help. 
Karen asked why it was wrong to go to the alchemists in the capital. But Tora, realizing her mistress annoyance, all answered calmly and explained that Rast was the best. Karen agreed with such a statement. And Tora noticed how happy the mistress of this camp looked. Tora remembered her dead friends and felt envious, but afterward decided that alcohol was to blame. In the end, the girl knight still could not contain her emotions and began to tell Karen about her troubles and lost friends.